Okay, so then I'm going to start the meeting at 5.03. Um, and since we have public here and it's a public meeting, we're gonna uh, open up public comment and I'm just gonna read our uh, expectations for public comment. The board welcomes comments, but it is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you, and please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are asked to by me. Please identify yourself with your first and last name in your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. You can express agreement with those comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. So I will now open it up to public comment. So, Sarah, those of you online, if you can raise your hand if you'd like to make a comment. Okay. All right. Um, so I brought this up last time. Uh, oh, still got to do a name, even though we know you. <laughs> name from town. Sorry. Uh, parent of a couple of persons. Um, so I brought this up yesterday, but many of you were not there at the forum. So I'm going to bring it up again. Um, there's a couple of federal court cases that have come out, and I think they really uh, shine a light on that the AOE's policy and this district's policies on on the access to locker rooms is going to eventually um, fall pretty hard with the federal courts. And uh, the first one's Merriweather versus Hardtop, which actually uh, speaks directly to Travis Allen's lawsuit. And it was decided 3-0 by the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. So it's not, it's not a minor decision. It's an appeals court, the federal district court, and they decided it 3-0. And they asked, uh, the defense asked to hear, have it heard again by the full circuit, and they rejected their request. So the 3-0 decision stood. And it's almost identical to the current lawsuit where a professor was uh, removed as he refused to uh, accept the gender request from a student on uh, free speech and religious grounds. And um, so there's that decision, and now there's this decision, Nice versus Becerra, who's the, uh, Becerra is the current Secretary of Health and Human Services. And this is a district court and a federal court uh, decision. And they talk about the difference between Title VII and Title IX in, in uh, federal, uh, law. Title VII, if you don't know what that is, that is the requirements for employers uh, to hire people. It's an anti-discrimination law. And that title does indeed talk about um, sexual orientation and gender identity, and you can't discriminate uh, against people uh, for those topics. Um, and then Title IX has to do basically with protections for women. And the court looked at Title IX and said that Title IX would, would reign uh, when you're talking about women's sports in schools uh, because it talks about sex, but not uh, sexual orientation or gender identity. And it declared that it was biological sex, not uh, gender identity. So the federal courts are leaning strongly towards biological sex versus gender identity when it comes to sports. And I would assume that would also uh, drill down to sports locker rooms. And I really think the policy that you have here is going to end up like the shirt left decision versus Boston with the flags. Uh, for years, I begged Fox and, and this administration to not go down the road they did with the flag because there were going to be constitutional issues. Now, you didn't get sued over that, but no, yeah. I was right. But now you have a lawsuit and okay. If Sorry. more situations like this come up, I'm afraid it's going to cost the taxpayers money, and I would beat it. Thank you very much for your comments. Do we have anyone else? 
as far as you can tell. Nope. Okay. Um, so we're going to move right along. Um, Elaine, we're going to have Sam go first because he's kind of he's under a little bit of a time constraint yep. and um, transportation uh, arrangements. So um, we're going to start, Sam, with um, just having you explain to us um, why you'd like. I know you wrote us a letter and we've seen your resume. But we just like, in your words, just to explain why you're interested in being appointed to the board for the next three months. So just so that you know, this will be a three month appointment and then um, you would then need to run for that seat if you decided you wanted to continue on. Sure. Um, hi, uh, Sam Hooper, uh, resident of East Brookfield, um, grew up in Brookfield and um, know my community and neighbors well. I'm a big believer in uh, civic obligation and civic duty. Um, and I feel with the open seat from Brookfield, um, I thought it would be prudent for me to put my hat in the ring. Um, I'm a strong believer in uh, quality education um, and uh, in, a, in a strong public education that's rigorous. Um, and that is inclusive to all community members. Um, I understand and I uphold uh, fiduciary responsibility uh, to taxpayers and I respect that. Um, with that said, I, I don't believe in um, crippling uh, investment in uh, policy and, and, and the school system that won't move it forward. So I'm, I'm a big believer in, in continuing to create forward progress on um, public education. I'm a small business owner in Randolph. Um, I've got 12 employees, um, most of which have grown up in, in the school district or have uh, kids in the school district. So I take their um, feelings about our public school system seriously. And I feel like it's a good time for me to engage in that. Um, while I don't have kids, I have two nephews who are both in the Randolph Elementary School. So I'm gonna open it up now for um, board members to ask questions of Sam. Does somebody wanna start us off? You don't have any specific questions. Um, so I have one question for you, Sam. Um, we work from uh, policies, so we are a policy driven board. Um, and it is, it takes a little getting used to a little uh, additional education just to get yourself up and running and to understand sort of how we govern the district. Do you see yourself having time in the next month or so to get yourself up to speed so that you can understand what we're doing and what our processes are? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, I pride myself on when I aim to do something, I aim to do it at full commitment. So that would mean uh, getting up to speed as fast as possible. I sit on a handful of other boards and I understand the rigor that goes into policy making, policy development and uh, confidentiality. I was actually gonna ask about boards because I had, um, you know, I think I had no board, board experience before I came onto the board and didn't, certainly didn't understand the difference between government and management and the limitations of the board. Um, and I think a lot of people who joined the board had that same um, experience when they when on the board initially. So I'm wondering if you if you feel like you have a handle on the difference between um, governing and managing, and if that would affect your um, interest in serving on the board. Uh, I I feel like I have a, a a strong grasp on the difference between governing, managing, and uh, activism. Um, they all have their different roles in 
in civic engagement, um, but with um, sitting on boards, you have a you have an obligation to uphold your responsibilities to that board and not let your personal beliefs um, kind of uh, overly infect that. Um, so, yeah, I would say I have a strong strong grasp on that. Um, do you have any, do you feel like you have any strengths that you can bring to the board as a whole that are potentially not present currently? Um, I, I don't, I don't want to, um, you know, I don't want to suggest that I uh, understand uh, everybody's strengths and weaknesses on the board, who sits on the board, but um, my main goal when I do, when I do sit on boards is to not take up space that's unwarranted to me um i aim to listen uh, absorb and learn and then add value where i see fit um i'm not in the business of grandstanding or suggesting that i need credit for things i'm merely trying to work in a collaborative um, manner to forward public policy questions? Hannah, do you have a question for her? Okay. Um, Sam, do you have any questions for us? Um, no, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I, I mean, I appreciate all the commitment you guys do and the work you do. And um, I acknowledge the time commitment and the effort that goes into it. And um, I appreciate the opportunity to serve as a resident from Brookfield. Um, and I hope you give me a look. All righty. Okay, thank you very much. And, and um, what's going to happen is we're going to interview Elaine, and then um, we're going to go into executive session, and then we'll, we'll come out of that with a decision. So um, I will email it out. Uh, as well as it will happen um, in in this meeting, um, in this meeting link. So if you want to try and hang on or whatever, okay? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to stay tuned as best I can here. If I have to go through okay. security, I may drop drop <laughs> off and come back in. But, um, thanks a lot for accommodating me. Okay. Well, thank you for being willing to do it this way. <laughs> Appreciate Most it. Certainly. Yeah. Okay, take care. Right. All right. So, Elaine, we're going to put you on the hot seat now. Um, okay. So you sort of saw what, what we were doing. So we're going to give you a little time to just tell us um, why you'd like to serve for this three-month opening. Excellent. Well, I saw it as an opportunity to to try a school board on for size and see what that might look like. Right. I thought about it over the years, have not had the time for the commitment, uh, but uh, recent changes in my work where I'm working from home and make it a lot easier to get more involved. Um, I have a student in RUHS and um, helping her to kind of be part of the community is has been really helpful seeing a lot of the challenges that the community is is facing that mirror a lot of things that are happening around the country has also kind of given me sort of a sense of well this is an opportunity to try without running through an election and doing all of that to see if i can contribute and add value um, it also helps me get a sense of the policy implications of the school board and the and the role and responsibilities that you have, your limitations, right, and and the things that you can do. So I see this really as just this this glorious moment to kind of jump in, see how it turns out, and if it seems like the right fit, uh, then I could pursue uh, continue to stay on the board if the community would like that. I think that. Um, my background is in education. I am a college professor. So I have been with Champlain College for 22 years and I currently teach in Champlain College online and I teach adults uh, in continuing education and master's degree programs. I have worked with young people for a very, very long time. And I think that that brings a unique 
lens to the table when we're talking about um, academic integrity and uh, we're looking at data to say if are we a good school or not a good school and, and what that means. And I understand a school board does not set curriculum, um, but I understand what it means to go through the curricular process. And I um, know deeply what it means to help students uh, achieve their goals and whatever that looks like, whether that's continuing on to college, whether that's staying uh, in a family business or, or working, or whatever that looks like for them. Uh, so I think that brings a, um, a lens to the table that can be helpful. Um, I've also been, I've had a daughter in different schools um over the years so, so and i've had um exposure to multiple types of schools from catholic schools to public schools in south burlington and uh in waits river and in Callis at u32 and here so it also i also have kind of that uh perspective i have experience working on faculty senates <laughs> and other areas like that where we talk about policy and set procedure. So I do have that knowledge as well. Okay. So again, I'm gonna start with, with my question about policy governance. It's a little bit different from sort of uh, the way some other boards might function. Um, and as I mentioned before in my other question, it does require a little bit of um, just some initial time to just sort of read through material and get a sense of, of how we operate as a board. Um, we will, I can meet with you and orient you a little bit, um, but it does mean a little bit of homework on right. your part. Um, is that something that you feel like you have time that you yes. could devote to? Yeah, I've already looked at some of the links that you sent. I watched the video. I've read some of the materials. I see the access to uh, the Vermont State School Board Association. Um, and so I'm, I, I am also a lifelong learner. So it is always helpful to understand some of the ways in which our local schools are governed. So yeah, I'm definitely ready to do that. Rachel, did you want to ask you a question? I think she already answered it. Oh, okay. She asked me to ask my question. <laughs> Anyone else have a question here to ask? No other questions. Uh, how about you, Hannah? Do you have a question? No. Okay. All right, Elaine. Do you have oh, yes. any questions yes. for us? Yeah, I just, I would love to hear from different folks about, uh, you know, very, very quickly, what was it that uh, had you decide to serve on the board and what has it been like for you? Okay, I'll, I'll go first. Just, um, I, I think I'm the person who's been on the board the longest. Um, and I joined when I had kids in upper elementary school. And I joined <laughs> um, partly with this idea of, um, you know, sort of not knowing. Um, so this idea of, well, this is my way of improving the schools. Mm -hmm. um, and um, probably with a little bit of a personal agenda of, of kind of making it. And then as I joined and learned how a school board works, um, I also, in my professional life, I've worked for VSAC, so helping students find their pathways um, after high school. And so I really, and I've been an educator, so I really like sort of the, the, um, the, the looking at the system as a whole, K-12, um, and sort of what do we want our students to be able to do for skills and soft skills to be able to move forward beyond um, in, and into their lives. So mm -hmm. um, I I really uh, enjoyed that. I I was on the board when we merged our district, which was a great money saver for the district as a whole. And it also allowed the board to gel a little bit more to be thinking about its 
all of the students, not just Brookfield Elementary students or Braintree Elementary or Randolph Elementary. We really are now as a board. I, I don't feel any of the initially when I was on the board, there was a little bit of, you know, these are my kids over here rather than looking at the system as a whole. So, um, and I've been doing policy governance for a while. I, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a challenging way to govern, but it's also, um, I think it, it's also a, an effective way to govern. We're still working on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are some pieces that um, we haven't quite got down, but I think it allows our administration to really um, try out some new things and, um, and be innovative um, and hopefully, um, you know, make some progress toward doing some really great things for students. Oh, that was a long-winded answer. I Sorry. appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll go next. I'm Sarah Hopped. I represent Randolph, and I have two children in Randolph Elementary currently. Um, I chose to be a part of the board, and the community also chose me um, in March of 2022. Um, because I had worked and volunteered in actually Randolph and some of the other local elementary schools. And I wanted to get more of a grasp on um, the other piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, not just the inside, the outside too. <laughs> right. And uh, the community as a whole. So that I guess would be my answer. Excellent, thank you. We don't all have to do this. Do no, you don't all have to answer, just if you want to. It's okay. <laughs> I'd be glad to share it with you, but I don't feel like I need to take up the time to do it today okay. if other people have a better story. Well, well I will say I'm from Brookfield and I'm happy to meet you, Elaine. I know Sam. Um, I joined the school board a couple, a year, year and a half ago, and um, I thought I was going to be making decisions about you know, approving budget for new sports uniforms and like bringing that to the table. <laughs> and little did I know the vast amount of social issues that have come across our table. Right. But um, yeah, I think it's a it's a good group and it's uh, policy governance can be difficult at times, but it's probably also the best way to govern these hot topics, I think. Right, yep. Okay, anybody else wanna go before we, any any other question or? I think I think that's great. It gives me a little bit of sense of, of some of the things that you came in the door with and some of the things you discovered and learned about. Uh, so I appreciate that, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so at this point, um, we're going to move into executive session to deliberate. You mm -hmm. gave Elaine a chance to ask questions. I don't think you yes, I did. Sam. You did? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Missed that. Sorry. Yep. We'll um, so we'll. So give me a moment. I'm going to, we're going to check out of this actual Google session for a little while. When they're done executive session, they'll come back in. Yeah. So um, if you guys hang out. They, they will be do we, back. Do we need a motion? Yep. To enter well, session. we're okay. So, can I have a motion, please? Uh, move to enter executive session to deliberate regarding a replacement proposal. I second it. Seconded by Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. Any I discussion? So. Am I supposed to? No. No, no. I, I, all right, so Patrick makes a motion. Chelsea seconds. Chelsea seconds. Is Are there any inviting, discussion? That would be a conflict of interest no, for us yeah. to be there. Yeah. Just be the board. Okay, just so the board. just the board. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous? Yep. yep. All right. Okay. I'm going to switch so it we'll over. See you in a little bit. And there's no public comment allowed when you're going to take a vote. Mm. The public comments go over. Uh, oh, no. Here. Well, when we vote. come back, when we come back, we could do a public comment and then 
we'll we'll make well, then we'll do our action. Okay. You want to switch things I'm over? Sorry. No, all right, we're back. The we're all right in. So before the board takes action, um, we've been asked to have public comment. So it will be the same rules as before. I'm not going to read through the preamble. Um, you get three minutes. Starts with a question. Last month, the superintendent's report, I think it might have talked about some land to be purchased possibly for the for a new school. Need to know if it did or not. Oh, is this is to do with this topic? It is. Um, I don't think it's not. Yeah, I would. I would. I'm going to defer you to if you've got a question, you can call the superintendent and ask. Well, I need to know who could possibly buy the land from. I'm wondering if it was the. There was no discussion of buying land at all. Okay. All right. So, do we have a motion for who we would like to appoint for the Brookfield vacancy on the board? Uh, I'll move to appoint Sam Hooper to the OSSD board to fill the Brookfield vacancy. Okay. I second. Seconded by Sarah. So all those in favor, we say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much for your interest, Elaine. Um, it was a hard decision to make. Uh, no worries. Thank you all so much for your time and the opportunity. Uh, Sam sounds awesome. So I think uh, it's going to be great. And you'll see me around at other uh, events and things. Awesome. Thank you Thank so you. much. Take care, everyone. All right, you too. Bye. Sam, you did you hear the news? Yes, thank you so much. Appreciate the honor. Okay, so you need to, um, when you get back in town, uh, in order to participate on the board, you do need to be sworn in by the town clerk. Uh, okay. From okay. Okay, awesome. I'll, be, I'll be on it on Tuesday. Okay, and then um, we also have a a laptop for you and a school it's a school board email that you're going to be doing all of your school board business with so we don't use our personal emails for school board business okay 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 sounds good all right. linda and i will be in touch with you awesome thank you so much all right thank you have a safe trip thanks everyone appreciate it all righty thank you bye-bye Okay, so we're moving on to the consent agenda. So that was, um, and remember consent agenda items are just things that Lane needs in order to manage our system. So he is looking for um, some funding for the locker room changes and I know I, I didn't check my email okay. um, to know you were going to put out uh, an email about sort of where things were today. Have you uh, or I, have you not yet? I can. It? We actually we talked about it about OS day uh, about specifically about the locker rooms or where the heating no, 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 no. About the heating system. That, that went out about thing. two hours ago. OK, yeah. I, I get a chance to look at it. Yeah. Um, so is it, what are we looking at? You're gonna make you're gonna make me curse it by talking about it. Um, so the heating system piece at this point in time, um, the facilities crew has been kind of scouring the planet to find somebody who has the parts. Um, we did find a, a group, I believe it's out of Virgens, that is able to come in. They're guaranteeing that they can do the work, have the heaters up and running um, by December second, which will give us two days over the weekend to kind of check all the pipes within the schools to make sure that none of them have frozen, none of them have burst, um, do whatever other repairs and the hope is to have the kids back in the school on December 5th. Nice. Um, so that's gonna prevent us, it's, it's an extra week of um, having the students out of, uh, out of school, but it prevents us from having to do that massive mobilization 
um, to other locations, which would have included having to move all our equipment mm -hmm. um, there and back in, in a short amount of time. Um, so I think it's the best of all worlds. So we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed that they can do what they've guaranteed us that they can do. Awesome. So that's that's where that stands. So to. do you have an amount then for that repair so, or yeah, the locker room is about is thirty four thousand. Okay. Um the facilities reserve funds, it's just it's gonna be what it is. Um I can give you an estimate, but I can't even tell you if it's in the ballpark. I would guess less than a quarter of a million. Um the heating. The heating. And that's assuming okay. that we don't have to do any moving. You know, if if something blows up at the last minute and then we have to kind of execute that mobilization plan, that's going to have the cost up exponentially. Um, when you were looking at that, yeah. was it, do you know how much it's going to cost? No, like we were, like we were, busing. yeah, there, there's busing. We'd need to have an actual moving company come in and move the tables, desks, chairs, the uh, equipment that the teachers would use. Um, I give a lot of credit to both, both Vermont Tech and um, White River Valley um, for you know working with us, but there there would have been should have been charges um, there as well. Um, plus, there would be equipment that we would have to buy, like Vermont Tech for some of the students. It was just big open spaces that we'd have to put dividers up in, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Um, and so it was an ideal for like six weeks. Yeah, and then have to do it all again in reverse. Um, and the reason to use the moving company, the, the community was actually really good last night because they were talking about, you know, getting a community drive together to move the stuff, which is awesome. But if this equipment gets damaged, there's not really any insurance on it. Whereas if we have a moving company doing doing it, you know, if we damage a seven thousand dollar, you know, piece of equipment, then then it's covered. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so we're looking at December second. Uh, December second is uh, when they plan on having the heat up and running. And then again, two days to check the system out. So is it going to fix the, the pipe that? This is a permanent fix. This is not a temporary. At first, right. we were trying to rush and get a temporary fix in, but it wasn't possible. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Can I, can I ask a question? And I'm sorry if it's been answered because children okay. are bad. But um, so just procedurally, to, to approve this um, request without an amount, do you then need to come back to us once you have an amount? It seems odd to approve. I mean, obviously it needs to be done and I'm not looking to vote against it, but it, it feels odd um, yeah. to be yeah. voting on an unknown figure. It's a, it's an emergency situation. So it's, it's not a normal situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the two possibilities are you do a vote, you put a cap on the amount, if it's above that, then we get back together and, and talk about it again. Um, the second option is um, what we always do anyway, is there's there's double and triple checks on all, on all these things, the auditor and Robin, but we could just do a report to the board. Here's how much was actually spent. Robin can confirm that. And here's the bills that go along with it. Um, and so that's another way of doing that, doing that uh, check and having that oversight. So those are a couple of things that I could could recommend. Um, we did talk with the state. Usually there's um, procurement requirements, you know, anything over $40,000, we have to go out to bid. Um, they were very clear that given the situation that, that it's an emergency, those things do not apply right now. Our job is to get the kids back in school as fast as we can. Um, so they were very good about that, but good question. So as part of the motion, you know, if, if the board wants that additional oversight, which isn't a bad thing, um, those are the things that I suggest either put a Put an upfront cap on it, and then if we hit that, we have to come back together as a as a as a group, um, do another reserve request, um, or just have a final report. You know, see, make sure the numbers match. Um, they will be checked anyway. Um, you've got Robin as the 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 person on uh, as the dual control, and then you've also got the auditors. Um, uh, go ahead, Hannah. Go ahead. Just I, I I feel more, and this is just an immediate response. I do feel more comfortable putting a cap on it. Just um, again, an open-ended uh, approval. Just feel, and it has nothing to do with trust or or um, thinking it'll be misspent or anything like that. It just um, voting for a, a non-figure without any parameters feels odd. Yep.
So, and what was your guesstimate on, or uh, you don't, you... It's, it's hard to tell because there, there's a lot of costs associated with getting the temporary portable heating systems that were brought in. We brought in um, from Dead River, we had to have all the propane tanks, the thousand gallon propane tanks that are attached to each one. That was just to keep the high school warm enough to try to keep the pipes from freezing. Mm -hmm. um, we brought an extra for RTCC because it's a smaller space to try to get the temperature above 65 so we can have the kids back on Monday. Um, so there's that aspect of it. And then we've got the actual emergency repair over potentially a holiday and a weekend. Um, so I would guesstimate, you know, I would say somewhere in the 250 to 300,000 range if we don't have to do a mobilization if we don't have to move kids, which is right now is what it looks like we don't have to do. Okay. So a reasonable cap? I would say 300. Or do we want to cap him at, if that's your guesstimate, 350? Yeah, and I may, I may be way off at that point. What if we cap him at where he thinks he's going to be and if you think you're going to be over that? Because sometimes these come in, well, no, usually you've, you've got a bit. Yeah. <laughs> but since we're going on an estimate, I'm I'm thinking maybe we go with kind of your guesstimate of where what you think you're going to need, and then if not, <laughs> plus ten percent. Yeah. Is that usually what? Well, with I don't know of, what. Do, yeah, what? with the cost of um, materials and mm -hmm. fuel going up. Yeah, and so is that is that you you folks do estimates with people, right? Uh, yes. Is that how? Not there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I come up with a ten percent. I think. Yeah, I think ten percent would be reasonable because some things also might take more time and inspect it. So, so three eighty five, three hundred eighty five. We, we don't we don't know how much fuel we're going to go through in those propane tanks. It depends on how cold it is. So right. There's a lot of things that just you can't figure out. Um, I'm sure propane is through the roof as well. Yeah. Um, I, you know, my guesstimate, you know, I, I would do the 300,000 um, and, and hope it comes in less. 300,000? Yeah. yeah. He said between 250. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I thought he yeah. said. Okay. Yeah. And then if there's more, then we would just do another request. Yeah. I, I, we would come in and say, and hopefully we'll have, we'll have firmer, firmer numbers at that point in time. Okay. All right, so we're going to amend this. Uh, you could do it as part of the actual verbal motion. Yeah, so okay. I move, it. Um, I move to approve um, the OFSD facilities reserve funds for heating system repairs up to $300,000. And we want to be separate or together, it's fine. You can do it together. And approve the um, RUHS locker room request for reserve fund for $34,060. I'll second. Seconded by Megan. Uh, any more discussion on this? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. I do, do have to say, I um, want to say this publicly. Um, even the construction crews and the folks that were coming in to help us out, everybody busted their helps. Um, it was it was incredibly giving um, in trying to help us with this. So I'm very appreciative of that. Yeah. So. Well, I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's exciting. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because it, yeah. I don't want to talk just, about just it because I don't want to curse. Keep our fingers <laughs> so. crossed. Yeah. Can uh, we please not have any major issue there? Okay, do was this just left over this or are we going into executive session? Yeah, there's 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 two things we should so talk about. So I move to enter executive session at 5:59 um inviting the superintendent and assistant superintendent to the session. And we're going in for for personnel. Personnel. Discussion. Second. Seconded by Take Hannah. care. Be Thank safe. you very much for coming. Uh all those in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, who seconded? Was that Sarah? Sarah, uh, Sarah thank right. you. Or it was no, Megan. Megan. Megan seconded, seconded the, the approval. The approval. Yes, yeah. Megan seconded. But yeah. move to executive.
Okay, that was me. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Thank it's you. Direction. Change up our yeah. All right. So we're exiting this one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll meet you over there, Hannah.